In January of 2005, Resident Evil 4 was released, impressing critics and gamers with its series-changing choice to go from the static pre-rendered backgrounds to a third-person over-the-shoulder camera. However, it wasn't the only horror game at the time to utilize that feature. Two months after Resident Evil 4, Cold Fear... Did someone say Cold Beer? No, Rewind. Cold Fear was unleashed into the gaming world, two critics mostly slamming it for being a ripoff of RE4. But is that really true? Is Cold Fear a knockoff, or is it something actually worth playing? Let's take a look and find out. Listen, is there going to be any cold beer? No. The story begins when a Navy SEAL team is boarding a Russian whaling ship named the Eastern Spirit, searching for something. But not too long after being ripped to shreds by a mysterious being, the team's supervisor, Jason Bennett, sends out a distress signal to all government ships in the area to investigate. The closest ship, the U.S. Coast Guard Raven Sword, arrives at the Spirit, and the crew splits into two teams to investigate. They never learn, do they? Well, after everyone is pretty much killed, one crewman remains, Tom Hansen. He heads aboard to look for survivors, but what he discovers is something not human and not friendly. The Excel, a parasite organism that can infect and reanimate the dead. Now Tom must escape this parasitic hell and find a way to stop the Excel from spreading. So, zombie-like creatures on a boat isn't something new. Hell, Resident Evil did it four times already. But what Cold Fear does with the setting, it does well. But I'll let you guys in on a little tip. Collect data files when you find them, as they contain quite a bit of story. I learned from this mistake as I would meet characters and I had no idea what they were doing due to missing a data file or two. But even missing some of those files, I find Cold Fear's story to be pretty good. Just like Resident Evil 4, Cold Fear is a survival horror game where, as Hansen, you have to fight your way through the exocell infested ship, as well as Russian mercenaries, to look for survivors as well as clues to the source of the infection. These parasitic foes come in many varieties, small ones, big ones, ones that can see in the dark, etc. Killing exocells can be a bit annoying as sometimes when you try to get one with a headshot, the parasite will jump into another corpse to try again, unless you're fast enough to give the bastard the boot. But there's one other foe you have to face, the Wild Sea herself. As you explore the ship, the waves can get pretty strong and knock you right off the boat if you don't hang on. But your stamina bar drains when you do this, so be mindful of that. Like most horror games of its kind, there are puzzles in Cold Fear, but they're pretty simple. Besides, Cold Fear is more about survival, and it does that really well. You don't really have an inventory, save for weapons and key items. You can't stockpile health items or ammo. If your guns are at full ammo, you can't grab any more bullets. Ammo can only be found at certain spots or by downed enemies, plus save points are very limited. Thankfully, the controls are simple and easy to master, especially with the lovely feature of switching between the static camera and a third-person shoulder view that Resident Evil 4 is well known for. If I had any gripes with Cold Fear, it's that it's not that long of a game, taking about four hours to complete, and with nothing extra to do, you're left with a game that you'll only need to play once and you're good. Graphically, Cold Fear is a bit of a mixed bag. The environments are really nice, with the standout being the damned whaling ship looking all dark and murky, along with the crazy wave animations. All around good stuff. The exocells are decent looking as well. Not exactly scary, but it gets the job done. And the humans? Eh, they're okay. On the audio side, the voiceover is pretty good, the characters having the perfect blend of seriousness and cheese. Why should I believe you? Because I'm here and you're not dead. Ha, funny. Where is Dimitri? Yusupov's dead. Good. The bastard deserved it. So can you tell me what the hell is going on here? He said you had some answers. He lied. I don't have answers. Then who does? Papa does. We can radio him. He will know what to do. The music, though, is kind of bland. It doesn't really motivate the action happening on the screen. Plus, the game's ending theme is performed by Marilyn Manson, so there's that. Mm. Uh, so that's cold beer, and it's indefinite for any- What are you doing? I said cold fear. Cold fear. Hmm. My bad, Pops. I just needed a reason to drink at noon, dude. Anyway, so will cold fear change your mind about whether it's a better game than Resident Evil 4? Oh, no. It, it probably won't. 
But that's not to say that this is a terrible game. Far from it. It has a cool story and fun gameplay, but with its short runtime and no real replay value, it's tough to recommend it unless you're a big survival horror fan and love it enough to want to replay it. It's a shame that a sequel wasn't made as it could have fixed the flaws this game had. Well, it's nice enough that the Big Green got an RE4 style game. Of course, this was way before Capcom ported it to every known home console, computer, and kitchen appliance. And with that, this is the Dolly Popkin. Thanks for watching and stay green. See you next time. I want a little man too! Here you go. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna hide under the sink till y'all go to sleep, then I'm gonna come out and make my poops and your kicks.